Hi guys, my name is Maddie at Books with Maddie and I'm back with the book haul. It has been forever since I have uploaded. I know, it's insane. <laughs> I'm terrible. But I do have like legitimate reasons. I recently just like sporadically got a job, was not part of the plan to get a job, but all of a sudden I got a job. <laughs> so I have a job and I was like, hard to figure out how to balance work with school in booktube i was like i need to take a break from one of those things and i don't think it should be work or school so i took a little hiatus from booktube pretty unplanned planned pretty spontaneous of me and i just i kept meaning to upload i literally have an entire other video filmed and almost completely edited i just had no motivation to get that one done so i was like i am just going to film a new one and hopefully i will have the energy and willpower to edit and upload this one by this saturday today is the 20 something it's tuesday the 20 third tw second third fourth i don't know it's one of those days and this Saturday is the goal for when I want to upload. And oh my gosh, I only have one up video uploaded in March. That's embarrassing. I have no conception of what I have hauled, what I have not hauled. I may repeat some things today. I may forget some things today. It's all up in the air. I don't know what's going to happen. It's going to be crazy. I haven't filmed in a while. I don't really know what I'm doing. With that said, I guess we'll just get into it. There's not a ton of books. It's going to be kind of a short video, but I just wanted to use this to kind of transition back into me uploading videos this is me putting it into the universe so i'm going to be uploading more every weekend you can take that to the bank okay anyway we're just gonna get into it the first two i'm gonna start with i feel like i might have hauled these already i feel like i might have so that's why i'm doing them first just getting them out of the way so i don't have to feel bad if i've already hauled them again the first one is queen of nothing by holly black morgan got this free for christmas and so I might have included this in my Christmas haul, but we exchanged gifts a while after Christmas, so I can't remember if I did. Apologies if I already hauled this, but this is the third book in the Cruel Prince series. I've not read any of them, so I don't know why I have the third one. But I do have the first two also, but I mean, I think I'm going to try to read them all at once, back to back to back. So I wanted to have all of them before I started any of them, because I just they're all pretty short, and so I just want to get through all of them at once, and then I will be up in the know with what's cool of booktube i'm gonna be so cool y'all aren't ready for me to be hip on hip booktube where i actually know what people are reading the other one is a deadly education morgan also got me this book for christmas so i don't know this one i already also might have already hauled i'm actually reading this one uh, i'm reading a book who knew i could do that i'm not very far i mean i'm almost halfway that is pretty far this is not a long book so I will say something controversial. I'm not enjoying this book. <laughs> this book is so polarizing. Basically, I'll give you a brief synopsis. It is a magic school. That's the setting of the book. I don't really understand the magic system. It's incredibly complicated, but there are like no teachers or anything. People just get like selected or like they apply and then they get like very few people get selected to go into the school and there's like monsters everywhere. They have to like survive. That's why it's called deadly education because it's like very deadly to go to the school. And then at the end, there's like this big battle or something that to, to see if they graduate from the school. And it follows this character whose name is, I don't even know. They say it like twice, I swear. Uh, Glad Gal Galadriel, something like that. And basically, she's very mean, and I don't really like her as a character, to be honest. She- I just- the writing is just not for me. I have not connected with any of the characters, but as I said, I'm not even halfway through, so maybe it'll pick up, but I'm just really not enjoying it right now. <laughs> Next, I definitely mentioned that I've gotten this one because it was my most anticipated book of the year. We Are the Ashes, We Are the Fire by Joy McCulloch. Joy McCulloch wrote one of my favorite books of all time, Blood, Water, Paint. And this follows a similar format where it's written in verse. I definitely hauled this one or at least talked about it. I, I just can't remember what video I did it in, but I wanted to mention it again. Officially in this haul, yeah, I mean, I I wish that I had read it. I wish that I could say that I've read it because it's my most anticipated book of the year. And I won it in a Goodreads giveaway. Is that not insane? And I wanted to read it before it came out, but I, the mail was just really slow. So I got it like two days before it came out. So I didn't have a chance to read it. I'm like 12 pages in. So not very far. So far, I mean, it's pretty good. I don't really have my opinion on it because I'm 12 pages in. 
but I'm very excited for it. And yeah. Okay, next, I've definitely told, talked about this one before. I got Lore in the Fairy Loot box for February, January, February, January. I think the box was January, but I uploaded it in February. This is the Fairy Loot edition, and I have not read this yet either, but I'm very excited to, if you want to know more about this book or what else came in the Fairy Loot box, my previous video probably is me unboxing the Fairy Loot box, so go check that out if you want to. The next two books, I don't know if anybody remembers this, probably. At the beginning of this year, everybody started doing this thing that was like 12 months, 12 friends, 12 friends, 12 months, something like that, and it was on Twitter, and people were like, there's 12 months in a year, 12 people who follow me, like, comment a book, and I'll read, like, a book a month, comment about it. I was one of those people who did that. I did not read any of the books that anybody recommended to me, but I still want to, and is that reasonable? Because, like, I still want to read 12 books, but, like, I would have to start doubling up, you know what I mean? So I don't know what I'm going to do about that. I still really want to do it because, like, there were some books in there that sounded really interesting. The next two books I thrifted and they were both on the list. That's why I thrifted them. So I have them. So, like, I want to read them. The first one is The Kite Runner by K Khalid Hosseini. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing the name wrong. This is a historical fiction book. I've heard so many good things about it. I'm sure everybody's heard of this book. I, I found it at, a, at my local like thrift store and I don't know anything about it I'm gonna be so freaking honest I just realized that I literally know zero thing I don't know what I'm really sorry I really should know what this is about but I'm really intrigued to read this there's like literally no synopsis I think it's about the aftermath of 9-11 on Muslims a vivid glimpse of life in Afghanistan over the past quarter century I'm really excited to read this. This sounds very interesting. I love historical fiction. I think this is going to be a very powerful book. And this is one of the ones I've been holding off on because it's part of 12 Months, 12 Friends. And I'm not sure how I'm doing that yet. So, yeah. But I am excited to read this soon. The next one is Blindness by Jose Saramago. Saramago. Bad at names. Um, this has won a Nobel Prize for Literature. I don't remember what it's about. A city is hit by an epidemic of white blindness which spares no one. Authorities confine the blind to an empty mental hospital, and there the criminal element holds everyone captive, stealing food rations and assaulting women. There is one eyewitness to this nightmare who guides seven strangers, among them a boy with no mother, a girl with dark glasses, a dog of tears, through the barren streets, and the procession becomes an uncanny, as uncanny as the surrounding are har harrowing, a magnificent parable of loss and disorientation, and a vivid evocation of the horrors of the 20th century blindness is a powerful tale of a man's worst appetites and weaknesses and man's ultimately exhilarating spirit i'm a little hesitant about this i'm not gonna lie because i already when was this published 1997 i'm already picking up on some themes stealing food rations and assaulting women and portrayal of a man's worst appetites and weaknesses this kind of seems like rape is going to be a, a literary device to move the plot forward. That kind of seems like what's going to happen in this book. And that's very, very, makes me very, very angry. But I'm not, I'm still going to read it. I'm still going to see what, what's up with that because I'm not saying that's actually what's going to happen. But uh, a lot of books written by men from that time period and before that and after that uh, follow that theme. The rest of these are all thrifted. So the next one I got... Apologies, there's a freaking ripped sticker on this because I can't get it off. But it's an enchantment of ravens by Margaret Rogerson. And this I know nothing about, but I know I've heard of it. Don't know anything it's about. Uh, but is this written by the same lady who wrote Sorcery of Thorns? Or am I just blending every single female YA author together? Could be. Um, don't know what it's about don't want to know what it's about i like going into these books blind probably won't like it because i don't tend to like why fantasy as much anymore don't know anything about it though so could be actually good next i got this book a cure for dreaming by G cat winters i really am a fan of this cover super fun this is a witchy 
1900s Halloween hypnotic wonderland book never heard of it uh the cover really intrigued me and there was actually like i looked uh on goodreads and there was actually a lot of really positive reviews for this book and i've never heard of it so i believe it's categorized as historical fiction and it follows a girl whose father thinks she's like she's like rebellious kind of and her father is like trying to constrain her love that narrative next i got the paris wife by paula mclean I heard of this book a while ago. I'm pretty sure Morgan had it and I was very excited about it when I heard her talk about it and I believe it follows the wife of Ernest Hemingway. Yeah and it's historical fiction and that was all I needed to buy it. The next one is also a historical fiction with the word Paris in it. <laughs> the Lost Girls of Paris. I'm pretty sure this one, did this win a Goodreads Awards or am I a delusional? Maybe it's not. Maybe it was nominated. I don't know. But this was like a very. This is a very recent release, and the thrift store that I was at does not usually have this recent of releases. I believe this came out in twenty nineteen. So I was pretty surprised about that. Pretty excited about it. I don't remember what it's about because I'm an idiot. And I never read what books are about before I buy them. But yeah, man, these book hauls are becoming more and more disheartening for me because I hate the number of books that I buy. I hate how many books that I have. I hate that I haven't read. 50% of the books that I own, it makes me anxious and I don't like it. Moving on, I got ugh, another book that I don't think I like. Why do I buy these books? The Last Voyage of Poe Blythe by Ellie Condy. I realized after I bought this that Ellie Condy wrote Matched, which is like one of my like no-no series. It's one of those series that I'm like, I absolutely am so certain I will not like this book and I will never like it. So why did I buy this book? Cause the cover is so pretty look at the cover that's so pretty i know this isn't at all like matched it follows a girl who is the captain of a mining ship uh she's going for revenge which is pirates in revenge i don't even know if the word pi I'm, I'm saying pirates i don't know if they're classified as pirates river raiders river raiders is just a nice way of saying pirates okay this is a pirate book and that's my justification for buying it because i freaking love pirates Next, I bought a book that I actually think I'll like, and it is Catch and Kill by Ronan Farrow. This is, this is a, a kind of a chonker now that I'm looking at her. This is a nonfiction book, but I believe it's like written like a spy thriller. Ronan Farrow is a journalist, and he was investigating this like underground world of predators like Harvey Weinstein and this is just all about that i just think that's gonna it's i think just think it's gonna be so interesting to read i think that was like such a big topic for a while and then it just like went away and nobody talks about it anymore and so i think this will be a really good way to kind of refresh myself on that whole issue and talk about it more because it definitely is still happening for sure and we definitely still need to be talking about predators and media and things like that so bought this book and i'm very excited to read it okay i got this book for free i'm pretty sure because uh it was like one of those like you know how you, if you spend enough money on thrift books you get a free book under five dollars and so i got eleanor oliphant is completely fine because this book has been continually recommended to me despite the fact that it's a contemporary and i usually don't like contemporaries but i think this is an adult contemporary which makes me feel a little bit better about it i don't really know what this is about i know it's so wholesome though and everybody loves this book and the characters are extremely endearing so i'm very excited to read it and that's pretty much all i know so yeah the last one is actually a book that i've already read and i love this book so much i don't know why it took me so long to buy I had it as an ARC originally, so I've talked about it before, and I think like last November I read it, or October, and it is Here's the Beehive by Sarah Crossan. This is one of those books that when you're reading it, it feels very average, and then when you finish it, you're like, you know what? I think this book changed my life, and then you keep thinking about it, and you like can't stop thinking about it, and that was this book for me. This book is really expensive i'm not gonna lie i think the paper rag is like 30 dollars and th the hardcover is like 25 or something or 
it probably maybe like 23 I don't remember I remember seeing it on Amazon and being like that's way too expensive but the Amazon marketplace you know it had a ton of copies I think I got this for like five dollars or something okay I'm gonna try to explain this to you it's been a while since I've read it but it follows a woman who is cheating on her husband she's having an affair with another man who is married they're both married she's having an affair with this married man and it's going on for like five plus years like a big length of time and all of a sudden he dies he gets in like a car accident I think and dies and she's left with this feeling of like dissonance because like she can't mourn him the same way that his wife and his family can because nobody can know about the affair but she wants to go to the funeral she wants to be a part because she loved this guy and this guy loved her and so she's just going through this grief that's just like wrecking her because she can't express it in any way without somebody finding out about the affair it is such a good book the way i think it's written entirely in verse and i love books written in verse this book is entirely morally gray because you should you feel bad for her she was having an affair on her husband and encouraging somebody else's husband to have an affair with her like not that it was her fault like that was his choice obviously but like she's not innocent in the matter like she was cheating too and she was also cheating with a married man and he was cheating and he was cheating with a married woman so both of them were equally you know guilty but where like where do we want her grief to go do we want her to feel that grief do we want to alleviate that grief from her what like it's so morally gray and it just like broke my brain to read it and like I've just been thinking about it a lot recently I've been taking this philosophy of love and sex class it's making me think a lot about it and I've just I, I, I don't have a conclusion for you I'm inconclusive you should read it let me know what you think because it is one of the most like thought-provoking books and I think I've never heard anybody talk about it and it is so so good i think there are a couple slow parts this was for net galley so i have like a really comprehensive review on goodreads if you want to go and see all my thoughts because i don't remember them off the top of my head but i did have a couple critiques about uh i think pacing and things like that but overall like really really good book like very very thought provoking i think you should read it really please read it because it's so good and i highly recommend it to everybody it's just so thought provoking okay i'm gonna stop because i could literally talk about this book for hours and i really want to reread it now that is all of the books that I've recently hauled. That's pretty much it. I think, I think that's it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you're looking forward to new content coming out. I'm really hoping to get my other video uploaded. Really hope you enjoyed this little short video and hearing about the books that I hauled. Let me know what books you've recently hauled or if you're planning on reading any of these books or if you have read any of these books and you think that I should prioritize one of them over the others. Let me know all your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content, make sure to like and subscribe. I try so hard to upload every weekend, and I promise that I'm going to get better. So keep a lookout for new content coming soon. With that said, that is the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. I hope you have a great week, and I hope you have a great life, and I will see you very, very soon. Bye-bye.